Hey folks and welcome once again to the next seven day challenge for uh, Fearless Business and this seven day challenge it's all going to be about what's going on up here. So this is the seven day mindset challenge. Um, each and every day I'm going to be doing seven different mindset techniques which I have used and which a number of my clients now use within their businesses to create success and prosperity uh, not just in their business but inside themselves and um, uh, create and build confidence and to help grow the business and overcome limiting self-beliefs the I can't and I won't and I don't know how to and all of that stuff we are just going to absolutely kill it we're going to throw it out the window and we're going to get rid of all of those limiting self-beliefs and we're going to uh, create for you uh, in fact, I'm going to turn you into machines. You are going to be robots. You are going to be um, fearless business people. You are going to be the most fearless business people, uh, more fearless in business than you have ever been before. So one of the things I'm going to do is start off by saying that fearless isn't about doing crazy stuff um, like life-defying acts, near-death experiences and things like that. Um, that's uh, what I tend to do on my bike and going out surfing. However, um, fearless really is just about fearing business a little bit less. So what I mean by that is um, when we have those moments of oh, panic and a little bit of anxiety and little things like getting up to give our 60 seconds like pitch or um, uh, going to see a new prospect or maybe about putting our prices up or whatever it might be, when we get that bit of fear, that bit of anxiety that kicks in, all I'm trying to do over the next seven days is just to reduce that fear and that anxiety down a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more until you are fearless in business. So that's the plan. So I'm going to kick off day one, nice and simple, uh, basically with one of my favorite topics, which is around goals and positive affirmations. I will have probably most likely gone through this particular tool with just about everyone. You will have read it in my latest book, Take Your Shot. You will have seen it on my e-learning program as one of the first um, tools. And so I'm just going to reaffirm um, why this is so important and just have a look at some of the things um, because quite often we, um, well, human beings are habit-forming creatures, which means that we say, yes, we're going to change and we see the goals diagram and it looks really fun and interesting and we, we start to implement it. And then a few weeks later, we find out, find ourselves just doing the same old thing. Um, I believe that every day should be ever so slightly different. And so long as we're constantly evolving, anyway, let's crack on. So the goals exercise. So remember the story. So every single day, we carry on doing activities in our businesses, sending an email, doing the Fearless Business Programme, watching a Facebook video, sending out a social media post, maybe turning up to do a sales pitch or something like that delivering our product, doing a bit of marketing, getting the brochure done, updating our website, any number of different things. And basically what this looks like, what our business lives look like on a daily basis, probably um, more so before you met me, hopefully now all of you know about this, you should be a bit more organized, but it looks like a total mess. And what we tend to do as busy entrepreneurs and business people is we will dance and jump around from one activity to the next with no real sense of direction um, we, we create things called to-do lists, right? And all the to-do list does is, um, A, it creates another task for us to do for a start, but, but equally it doesn't tell us what order to do stuff in and what, prior, what, um, what are the most important things um, so far as our business is concerned. So in order to overcome that problem, we put a goal in place. When we are then a bit more specific, and we give these activities a bit of direction. You could draw a line from that activity down the bottom there, leading towards that goal, and it would pass through two or three or seven or ten more activities in order to get towards your goal. So remember this comes from Napoleon Hill's um, book, Think and Grow Rich, where he talks about having a goal, a strong enough desire. This is really, really important, actually. Um, having a strong enough desire in order to overcome that goal um, uh, sorry, to overcome the challenges that we face on a daily basis within our business. Whenever we have a knockback, when somebody leaves us a poor review or a client doesn't quite do what we say we're going to do or maybe the kids are playing up or somebody beat their, their car horn at us this morning, 
we just have to have a strong enough desire to get to that goal in order to over overcome those little humps in the road. The morning we wake up and we think, do you know what, I really can't be fagged with this. There is no point in even bothering to get out of bed and going to work. And do you know what, there is nothing wrong with having duvet days and just chilling out for a day, just because it um, gives us the headspace we need to uh, rebuild our energy levels and get ourselves back into a positive mindset where we can play all out in our business for our clients. So we put a goal in place. Now, down at the bottom end of the spectrum, we have noise. So it's that noise where sending out this email, is that going to get us closer to our goal or not? Well, I don't know. Um, but mindset, -ish, uh, mindset technique number two here is just trust your gut. So you have three brains, basically. You have your cognitive brain, you have your gut instinct, and you have your heart. And you'll have heard people say, follow your heart, trust your gut, listen to your head, all of those sorts of things. So the gut instinct is normally one of the strongest because it's where our human instinct lies. And so 90% um, of the time, our gut, gut instinct is actually right. So when we ask ourselves this question, when we're about to start any activity in our business, are we, is this activity going to get me closer to my goal or not? And let's say, for example, the goal is to get, I don't know, uh, 10 new clients a month. And that's going to bring in an extra £2,000 a month's revenue, just for example. So this email, um, which maybe has come in about a BBC interview or something like that, or some, uh, you know, go and fill out the survey for XYZ, is that going to get me close to my, well, I don't know, I don't know. If my gut says yes, well, we'll, gi we'll give it a bash. If your gut says no, we just don't do the activity. In... In crossing out and not doing these activities, the one thing this gets us back is time. So we can always make more money, but we can never, ever make more time. What we can do is choose to do less with our time and be much more focused. So choosing activities not to do that aren't going to get us closer to our goal is really, really vital. Because otherwise what happens is we get derailed. We come up with the next new shiny thing that we want to work on, maybe another book or an e-learning program or something like that, and it and it takes us off towards this ex external goal, and at the end of the month we go, oh, we didn't get any new clients. Oh, damn it, but I spent all my time writing that book. So it's all about getting the balance right. We don't want to have um, create another goal for ourselves that is going to damage or overcome this other goal. One of the really interesting things which happens, this is why this is all about mindset, because... Um, Businesses stop and struggle um, mostly because of fears. So these are fears around um, letting people down, fear of failure, fear of not finishing what we started, fear of starting, fear of success, all sorts of different things like that. So what tends to happen here is we start to realise that this other goal is taking us further away um, from our, our goal that we had originally set out for ourselves. And because we've started it, we just carry on regardless. Maybe we've set, we've told somebody we're doing something. We don't want to look foolish by saying no now. Saying no to stuff is one of the most powerful things that you can do in your business and your personal life. And if you can overcome the fear of letting people down when you say no, oh God, it just opens your world up because people will forget about it. And not only that, but they'll actually respect you more because you said no. Um, then what happens as we take our clients on this journey, and this is a customer journey, um, we move them into a space of clarity. If I could spell clarity, clarity, there we go. So this is the point whereby, okay, cool. So um, I, I get that thing that you put in your email. That really makes sense. We've had a quick call. Uh, do you want to set up a meeting? Yes. When can you do it? Uh, cool, we sit the meeting and they ask for a proposal. So you can see now, this again, this is a sales thing. So we're making sure that all of our activities are client focused as well as personally focused. Me writing my book wasn't an accident. It wasn't a, um, an ulterior goal. It was because I knew that if I wrote my book bit by bit and it came out, it was a marketing tool. And then the more books I send out, 
the more opportunities I've got to get leads in and people sign up to online business, um, to business startup, uh, who will then hear about the Fearless Business Program, book a consultation. So you can have you can have multiple goals, but they've all got to be leading towards the same um, one single goal at the top end of the funnel. And then finally, the message hits home, and they say, "Where can I sign?" Um, how I then tend to back this up. So first and foremost, a goal needs to be very specific. Because otherwise, if that goal isn't specific enough, then you don't know what direction you're heading in. Um, and you don't know what activities you need to do in order to achieve that goal. So if it's around your business, what turnover do you want to get? Work your way backwards. How many clients do you then need in order to achieve that? And over what time period do you want to um, set in stone in order to do that? So we've got 10 new clients a month, which is going to lead to £2,000 a month worth of extra revenue. Um, it could be a year-long goal that you want to get to a six-figure business and then you can work backwards it's all going to be based around getting new clients maybe you've got some assets to build maybe you've got a certain number of emails to send out or a number of consultations to sit um, or whatever it might be a 10-year goal um, when we start to get into five and ten year goals they tend to be less so about the business and more so about our personal life so um, because your business can change and evolve um, in a number of different ways, but personally, we um, it's easier for people to imagine themselves driving a specific car in five years' time, or living in a specific um, village or house in a specific town, like in five or ten years' time. Uh, they can see that their kids are like three now, and then when their kids are thirteen, well, they'll be at secondary school. What would they? What would? Where would we like them to be going to secondary school? So we can start to map out our lives, but for our business, it's harder. It's kind of like, oh, could I really see myself doing the same thing in ten years' time? I could personally, but could you? Um, so we've got to have a very clear idea about what our goals look like. So the other thing is as well that backs this up is about um, making sure that we start to reprogram our brain to, because straight away somebody will be like, um, oh yeah, I'd love to have a six figure business. Oh, I don't think I could do that. That's not very helpful. So that, that would be a very good example of a limiting, self-limiting belief. So what we do instead to overcome that is start to reprogram our brain. And we do this through things called positive affirmations. So there's a couple of things which I'm gonna ask you to do in this exercise. First and foremost, it's gonna to be to write down your goals for one, th uh, one five and 10 years. Um, just as a pricey, just like one specific goal that you want to achieve over in the next year, in the next five years, in the next 10 years. Um, I want you to score your desire to achieve those goals on a scale of one to 10. And then finally, I want you to write down, and this is the important bit, what your affirmations will be. So, um, or what your affirmations are, sorry. So positive affirmations are all about taking your goals and pulling them into the present. Because in order to um, uh, start to feel like things are achievable, we have to tell ourselves that they're achievable. We have to, like, we're our own best, like, um, accountability coach. If we don't believe it, nobody's going to believe it. So we have to start believing in ourselves and our goals. So my positive affirmations are, um, I am running a £250,000 a year business. I am driving a Range Rover hybrid. Uh, it's black. It's got um, uh, uh, smoked windows and really um, smart wheels. Um, I um, am living in a million pound house. And my children are at private school. Um, so there's, what happens then is, as I, and I would encourage you to come up with your own affirmations, four or five, write them down on the worksheet. You need to pin that, those four or five affirmations up somewhere and say them back to yourself every morning and every evening when you're in the shower, for example, or brushing your teeth or whatever it might be. So it's not about I will have, because what I will have tells you, you your brain, is that you can't have it now. You can have it in 12 months time, but you can't have it now. Or it says, oh, well, I'll have it in 12 months time. Therefore, I don't need to worry about it now. But what we've got to do is in order to achieve our goals is we've got to start worrying about them now, building our desire now, telling ourselves that we can do it now. Um, and then um, uh, we start then acting like we're already doing these things. And then when we start acting like we're already doing these things, miraculously 
we ask of the universe and the universe will deliver, um, we start doing it. So a good example is when I first set up my coaching practice was I, um, I'm running a, a six figure coaching business. I've got 20 um, paying clients. I'm a public speaker. I think I used to say I'm a competent public speaker. So I'm a public speaker. Um, I've achieved all of those things. So now I've got to move on to the next thing. Because basically when I set, step out anywhere and play all out in terms of speaking, consultations, coaching, I am already doing those things. But you, I had to tell myself first. Otherwise you get imposter syndrome because you start telling yourself you can't do these things. So positive affirmations are all about telling us what we are doing, what we can do, what is achievable. Um, cool. So as usual, just um, download the worksheet um, and uh, pop it into the comments box uh, on the Facebook post for this. And I shall um, look forward to seeing what kind of goals you've set for yourself and what your positive affirmations look like.